Hello, hello. So first of all, um, the giveaway fundraiser journal, I just want to say an absolutely massive thank you. Um, the current total on the fundraiser is £1,097. And I know two people at least have donated directly to um, the website because they were unable to use the fundraiser on Facebook. So it's absolutely amazing. I put in a total of £500 thinking it would take us the, the month to reach that. And you have just blown me away with your generosity and your care and your empathy. And just you are just so wonderful. So I cannot thank you enough. Um, second of all, regarding the fundraiser, um, there's going to be two journals actually now. Um, this is the one, obviously, I did the flip through. And the absolutely amazing Pat Page, who worked alongside with me when I made one of the other journals, she's made a journal and she is actually do donating that also as a prize. So there will be two people pulled out of the drawer um, to win a journal for um, donating to this amazing um, fundraise. I just cannot believe how wonderful it is. Uh, you, you're just amazing. Um, and I cannot thank Pat enough. I mean, it was so generous of her to, you know, all of this time she's spent making this journal. Um, it was well out of her comfort zone. And, she, you know, she's donating it as a, as a prize. And what I'm going to do is there isn't a link or a flip through for the journal. So I'm going to put pictures of that at the end of this video hopefully fingers crossed I will remember um but thank you Pat you are an absolute gem okay so what we're going to do um first of all um, I'm working on some kind of Egyptian things at the moment and you you may know that I've got a couple of kits in my shop um this is this is made from one of them it's Egyptian amulets and I just wanted to show you um how awesome these look um heat embossed what I've done is I've backed them onto just cardboard. Um, I've painted, I'll just show you some of the fronts first. I mean, they <laughs> they look amazing. I'm so in love with these. Um, some of them I've left the little bumps on because the original pieces would have been, you know, they wouldn't have been perfect. But what I did on the back of the cardboard is I painted them with Blue Lagoon, first of all, a darker blue. And then I um, just dabbed over some bronze um, to get this kind of effect. And then I used, um, let me just turn those over so you can see the backs. Then I used um, the Distress Oxide and I just sprayed a bit of water down and then dabbed it in in a few places to give it kind of this aged look. Now, it was a bit of a waste of time for me because I am actually going to box frame these. I'm going to make a, um, I'm going to make a, um, a back and a label, and I'm going to put them into a box frame. So basically, um, I'm going to box frame them, and this is the kit. I'm going to put them into this box frame, so they look. Um, you know like an exhibit basically so i just wanted to show you what you can do with these these amulets but obviously you can you could um use them in a journal or on a journal so um excuse my very poor hand drawing <laughs> um this is the template that i'm going to put into my facebook group um for the project we're going to do today now it's not perfect it's like i said it's just hand drawn but um i'm going to be doing these next not in the video but this is the um the scarab um, that i did and posted in the facebook group and said i can do a tutorial if anybody wanted it and provide the template so um i i, I said i'd provide a template before i actually drew it so this is it i'm really sorry anyway it's a template and it will work so what i'm going to do is again I'm, I'm making this onto a piece of cardboard. It's it's nothing special. I'm just going to see if I've got a piece that's got less bends in it. Doesn't really matter. No, this is fine. We'll use this. So I'm going to take my cardboard and my template. And uh, unfortunately, I can only find red. 
but this is just a piece of um oh what's it called you know um um paper that you can draw onto and it comes through um it's gone it's gone right i'm just gonna cut my template roughly Ooh. just to make it a bit smaller and i can see roughly where i am okay that's fine i'm gonna put it down onto my cardboard and i'm just gonna use a little stylus um now there's no point me drawing in any detail because i'm gonna be um doing something to this which will make that pretty pointless so i'm just gonna and this is where the drawing is itself doesn't actually matter how bad it is because we don't want this perfect it doesn't need to be perfect we're on cardboard we're going to be cutting it out so this is just a template to give you a rough idea okay Um, I probably will fast forward several bits of the video because there's a lot of um, things like drying to be done. Now, before I move that, I'm going to hold it in place and just, yeah, that's fine. So we, we need we need to, the template for later so we can look at that and know what we need to do next. Right, now, um, it's okay to cut this out with scissors. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually cut the wings off. So I'm going to go round the wings. And again, I'm not I'm not worried about perfection too much on this because it's supposed to be thousands of years old. <laughs> you know, it's not it's not supposed to be brand spanking new. Again, you could use a craft knife if you're more comfortable, but scissors will cut this perfectly well. But that's the start of our scarab. So the next thing is I can just grab it. I've got a few different ones here. I'm going to use this one. Um, I'm going to use some modelling paste. On the other one I did, I actually used the Distress Collage Medium Crazing because I was kind of hoping it was going to um, um, leave some lines for me, but it didn't. And, and I think the um, modelling paste is going to be much more effective. Now, this is when we are going to need our picture. I'm going to use my stylus again. I need my, I need my very dirty cloth. Um, and I'm going to need, I'll just pull my trolley over, um, a spatula. Um, oh, I don't know today. Seriously. <laughs> it's not, it's not a, it's not a remembering day. So, I'm going to take my paste and I'm going to just give this a coat. Okay, so the iPad stopped filming temporarily. I'm going to have to explain what I did during this section of the video. I used the modelling paste and then I used the stylus to draw in the markings on the scarab beetle so the body and the wings um, it was a fairly simple process and then once I'd done that I went on to dry using the heat tool and that's where we're going to pick up in the video
okay i actually do not believe this has happened to me um but this this is where i've got to i've now heat embossed this and everything i did uh, has not been filmed so what i'm going to do is i'm going to finish this off camera hello hello i'm back i have realized what the problem was um the ipad recording cut off when my phone rang and i have no idea why that would happen um i do know that when my phone rings my ipad rings and it's all it's just all a bit of a nightmare um so i've got some serious sorting out to do <laughs> with my devices um but that's what happened so as you can see these are now heat embossed and I think they look pretty spectacular compared to this one um, so you know this is this is getting there what I will do is I use this wax linen thread to, to sew the wings on and I tie them one at a time making sure that there's some movement before I um, before I tie it in a double knot um, this still has to dry completely because it's not quite there yet um, I am loving how this one's turned out but I'm very disappointed the video didn't work so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a step by step so and I'm going to use this one to show you <laughs> um, what I did was I took my salvage patina at distress paint and I just gave it a coat all over you know flat flat coat of the distra uh, the salvaged patina I then took the blue lagoon squirted it onto my board and I used um, this rather tatty brush and I just stippled the blue lagoon over that and all the way through this, I was explaining, you do not need to use the same paints that I've used. Any blue paint will work. You just need a combination of, of two different blues, really. Um, these particular beetles were very often in blue. They were also in grey because they were just carved into plain stone. So you could use two shades of grey if you wanted to. And they were also sometimes very elaborate with gemstones so you could add lots of other colors and they were there were lots of gold so you could use gold too so the first coat was salvaged patina the second coat was stippled blue lagoon and then i stippled salvaged patina again over the top what i then did was use the seth apter eye zinc ice um, and this one is tea something tea i don't know what that word is it's in french but it's, it's something tea could be iced tea could be black tea i'm not sure um i just popped a little bit on my finger and i rubbed a little bit here and there and you can see very very slightly where that's happened you know just to give it a little bit more of an aged aged look and give that a little bit more of a dull kind of um take some of the blue the newness of that blue away um, and then I used my Stabilo awl and I just made sure it was sharp and I went round where the dents were, where the pattern is. Um, and then I took a very, very thin somewhere. Where is it? Ah, it's in my water. Um, I took a very fine paintbrush, wet it, and I, I just wet the black, okay? And what that did is it, is it activates the black and it's much more vibrant. And then finally, well, not finally, I'm going to do this. I, I took my Uniball all, um, fine, sorry, and then I just drew in some additional lines to make it a little bit more interesting, um, which I'm going to do on this one right now and obviously I hadn't 
this one the other one hasn't been sewn yet so that wasn't sewn in just do a few little um, hints of lines and then just go around the wing a little bit okay so just did a little bit more line line work I'm going to go in some of these lines as well because it's not why not it's it's a, it's messed up anyway <laughs> well, it's not messed up it's actually improved it i think adding these additional lines because i didn't go in very heavily with that all um so once i'd got the extra lines in i took some white acrylic watered it down very very slightly and just flicked a very very small amount on I don't know if you can see there is a very very small amount of white just to kind of show that you may have um, on these ancient pieces a little bit of paint missing um, so I did that and then I lined my pieces up and before I heat embossed them I took my pokey tool and just lined up the holes and poked the holes ready for the thread because you can you can easily go through the um, what's it called the heat embossing but it's a lot easier if you have the holes there underneath first and then I will when this is 100% dry I will go in and do that Oh, one more thing. Before I heat embossed, I took a gold, a bronze acrylic and I just went round the edge and touched very slightly into some of the top just to give it a little bit of a gold trim. Um, so that was also something I did. I'm so sorry this didn't film. Um, I don't know that I'm going to get this done because the battery is now <laughs> dying on my iPad. Um, we'll see if I can get one done this afternoon but I'm going to be putting this on the front um, of a journal where I'm going to be using the kit uh, which is um, it's the Egyptian um, relic fragments so it's it's uh, a, a, an Egyptian theme and I'm just kind of in love with these collages at the moment I'm having so much fun um, so I hope you like this. I hope you got an idea of, of how it works. I think the first the first part is the most important. The painting is kind of is obviously secondary, but, you know, getting that textured paste and, and giving it this kind of stone effect, even though it flattens very slightly once you've got the heat embossing powder on it. This one is not quite this one's a lot more textured than that one. I'm still really happy with how it turned out. Um, if you do have any questions please do contact me. Thanks again to everyone who's contributed so far to the fundraiser. I will put the link in the video. Pat Page, amazing um, donation from her for this second journal for a second draw. So I'm going to put the pictures of that at the end of the video. Um, please take care, stay safe and happy crafting everybody. I hope it's more successful than mine was. I will see you all again soon. Bye.